Hey guys, welcome back to the shed. Let's take a break from fixing vintage electrical or electronic stuff. Um, we have an ob obligation every week. It's a new week. We have to get something out of the emergency shed. I hope you're enjoying the electronics repairs anyway. Um, oh, look, we have a guest star. What have you come to fix? I need help. Oh, she needs help. We're going to get something out of the emergency storage shed today, but obviously not right now. I'll be back with you shortly. Okay, I'm back. We got Christine sorted out. She has She's doing a video on her channel about replacing a belt on a sewing machine, and she just needs a little bit of guidance. So if you're interested in that, duck over to Christine's Home Affairs. Let's go and get something out of the shed and process it. Hopefully find some good value. Okay, we walk through our perpetually messy shed. Uh, and for those new to the channel, who I believe are most of you, it seems my videos are watched by... I think 85% of people that haven't watched my channel before. So welcome to most of you. Uh, I'm processing this stuff that was built. This shed was built in an emergency when I had to move shop. I have a secondhand antique collectible shop and we clean out deceased estates for a living. And I've been doing that for over 20 years. And a lot of stuff got moved here. And I don't even know what's in half of these boxes. So there you go. We're going through this. I think we're up to episode 57. Did I say that at the start? I don't think I did. So this will be an ongoing series. This shed goes back quite a long way and we packed it like you would play a game of Tetris. Uh, and I had a bit of help, so I don't know where things ended up. Some things like this old case here. I've cleaned out an old farm shed and I, I don't think I've ever looked in it. It just The shed had to be cleaned out. It got stored at my place. And now we're going through everything, seeing what treasures I own that I didn't even know about and processing stuff, working out what to keep, working out what to sell, valuing things and taking it back to the shop and selling it. There's another tub of bolts, just general hardware in there. And I did a couple of those in a recent video, priced them at $10 per lot. I did sell one on the weekend. So most of my prices are pretty spot on in that the stuff sells. Sometimes it's a bit cheap. I don't mind. It has to go. So we've got electronics, we've got uh, yeah, vintage CRTs, uh, computers, early homemade cupboards from a depression era or drawers, and that thing that's still got stuff in it, we'll get to that shortly. All sorts of stuff, and I am keeping some of it because eventually this shed is going to be a continuation of my other workshop. And one day in my dreams, and hopefully in reality, it's going to be somewhere to do a lot more repairs and restorations. Let's get this case. It's a pretty old case. It's not much good itself. The leather looks pretty stuffed, but there could be some pretty cool stuff in there. Let's get that in on the bench and have a look at it. So this old case really is a mystery. Uh, it might not be any good. I think it's had rats through it. It's been in an old farm shed for a long time. It will be pretty interesting to have a look at. And again, if you're new to the channel, um, have a browse around my channel. We do a lot of unboxings, but we also do a lot of repairs and just generally saving stuff from being thrown into the waste stream. So click that subscribe button. I'm not one of these guys that tells you to do that in every video, but hey, 85% just having a look and not hanging around, that doesn't sit right. Let's check this out. Okay, this case has been sitting around for a long time. There's certainly been mice or rats over it. That looks like part of a mud wasp's nest. I'm sure I've never actually looked in here. Oh, okay, this is, um, well, I knew it was leather stuff, but I didn't know what. This could in indeed even be military stuff. The case has absolutely had it. The leather's hard. It's got holes all through it. It's a shame. It's a pretty early case. And we have some, I'd say, horse gear. Horse harness. Now, if I remember, oh, the rats have even chewed the leather strapping. Uh, if I remember correctly, this could have come out of a shed, a farm shed, where one of their ancestors actually was in the Light Horse Brigade, World War One, I, I think. So these are gaiters. These are leather gaiters that the, well, even today horse riders wear gaiters, but they're not the heavy leather type that these are. And they're basically designed to go on your lower leg from the top of your boot up to just under your knee. And they protect, protect your, your lower leg from, I guess, all sorts of things. Brushing against um, twigs and trees and branches or snake bite or just generally to, for protection. I guess it's an early form of PPE. Uh, so there's four of them here. Now, the military ones are usually marked. 
and I'm hoping they are. These are actually in pretty good nick. A little bit of a rat nibble at the top there. And they've gone very hard. They've probably been wrapped up. Jeez, if these are World War One, these could have been wrapped up for over 100 years. So the leather can be rejuvenated. I'd have to be very careful opening it up because while it's so dry and hard, it will crack. But you can certainly bring leather back to being quite um, flexible. Now, I'm hoping there's some marks on here. I'll have a better look when I unpack them all. Um, so there's four of those here. That's had a bit of a nibble, which is unfortunate. And the strapping. Wasp nest. Very common in farm sheds. Um, also spiders, of course. But I don't think there's any fresh spider activity in here. That's a mud wasp nest. We'll get rid of that. Now, there's some belts too. Mm. Oh, that's actually, I think that's a leather strop. Jeez, that's no good. It's mostly eaten. I think that's a strop for, oh, it says, I can't read it, the princess, genuine, genuine horse hide. And that's for sharpening one of the old cutthroat razors. The uh, leather, I guess, just gets a really fine edge on your, um, like a final hone or a polish on your blade and the handles to hold it straight. So it would hook on, on the wall or something or a door and you'd hold it straight and you'd work the, uh, the cutthroat razor back and forth to sharpen it. They sell quite well. In good condition, I would expect this is probably a 20, 30, maybe even a $40 piece. In this condition, it's probably not worth anything, which is a shame. The hardware is probably still worth saving. But yeah, there's just so little left of it. That's a shame. Uh, what else have we got? We'll get this other, another wasp's nest. Can't even, oh, there's more in there. It's nearly full of mud. Yeah, you can barely see through it. I guess they make uh, nice homes for the wasps. So that one doesn't look overly chewed. This is a large flat belt. I think this is what they call a Sam... A Sam Brown belt if it's military and it went around your your tunic is that what you call it your your um, heavy army coat nice big brass fittings it's certainly quite old hopefully it's got hopefully these have some military marks on them I can't see any immediately but I'm pretty sure that's a Sam Brown belt uh, with the straps that I think went over your shoulder so yeah, that's pretty cool. And that's not in bad condition, and it's even fairly supple. That's amazing. Now, in the bottom, we just have... Oh, that's actually just a luggage tag off a bag. So we just have rubble. Um, the remains of leather straps. I think that was actually... Oh, no, there's the buckle under there of this one. Can't get it out at the moment. So there's even... is that the, That's the handle off the case. So, yeah, unfortunately, just too far gone. It looks like there's a leather pocket in here, and I think this other piece folds forward. Wouldn't it be nice to find some old paperwork under that? Uh, that's, oh, is that part of horse harness? I think it possibly is. I'm not really sure. We have just the remains of wasp's nests. Just the, the padding that was probably the sort of padding that was inside the handle of the leather strop, the razor strop. That's a shoe stretcher. So it's spring steel in the middle. It's got some material wrapped around it. And you would poke that in your shoe. I don't know which way it goes, I guess. Flex that in and that pushes against the heel and it just keeps your shoes, um, I guess, important for leather shoes that can shrink. Just keeps them sort of stretched. Don't think it's really worth a lot. They usually come in pairs because obviously you have two shoes. Uh, another luggage tag. Oh, I'm going to have to scrape this out in the bin. I'm keen to have a look in this pocket. And we have another luggage tag. Oh, that's the one we had before. All right, nothing else interesting in amongst all that rubble. Part of an old latch. All right, I'm going to tip this out and we'll open up the bottom and just see if we can find anything in there. So I've just brushed this down outside. It's not the sort of, sort of stuff you want to breathe in. A hundred year old um, fluff and dust and rat dirt. And yes, it's um, 
It was something not to do in the shed. So you can see there's a pocket here and the, a, a sort of whole fold down section. I have not opened them. I don't expect there's going to be anything in there, but stranger things have happened. And paperwork can survive if it's not in the line of fire from rats. But this does feel empty. I can't feel anything in it. Still, it's always fun to look. Uh, yeah, nothing in that one. That's unfortunate. Would have been nice to find a, a roll of... Um, or even a few old pound notes and things. Uh, okay, what's in the back? Probably nothing again. I'd say this case has just been used to store the old leather work. What do we got here? Oh, lot, lots more markets jammed on this side. Yeah, there we go. Unfortunately, nothing there. Uh, what can we salvage from this case? I don't think very much. It's just too far gone. It's a really nice old push lock. They're brass fittings. It's probably worth salvaging the brass off it. But uh, yeah, it's too far gone as a case. There's no top in it. No. All right. Well, unfortunately, that will probably just have to head to landfill. I will take the brass fittings off it. But uh, yep, it's... Um, it's sat around a long time and obviously not in the best storage conditions. So we don't get any value there, really. There's not enough brass to bother weighing up. We need to look closely at these bits. I think that's probably one of the nicer bits, the uh, Sam Brown belt. I'll have a bit of a closer look to see if there's any marks on it. I'm hoping they're military. Of course, they may not be. And I'll just give these a bit of a brush off and try and open them a little bit and just see if we can see any markings on them. I'll be back with you shortly and hopefully I've got something to show you. I've just spent the last 30 minutes or so and uh, these, I managed to roll out the gaiters. I put them in warm soapy water and soaked them for a bit and they were much more pliable and I was able to unroll them. Gave them a good scrub, got rid of all the mud. And now I've just been, uh, I let them dry for a little while, not totally dry. Uh, I didn't want them to go hard again. And I've applied some of this GY leather dressing. It's an Australian made product. I don't know if you can buy it uh, on Amazon. I did have a quick search and didn't see it. So maybe you can't. Uh, you might be able to buy it on eBay. I didn't look there. Great stuff. And what I've done is just really liberally smeared it all over things. You can see there's still some in the holes of the belt there. And it's soaked it in. And I gave it lots, and there's still little bits that are a bit wet, but the leather has soaked it in, and it's come up fantastic. It's actually looking really good. That's the top side, and you know what? That's for a hundred-year-old... Well, actually, this isn't quite that, but for very old leather, that's incredible. It probably should have, especially the belts, perhaps have another soaking, but they're fairly pliable, uh, and they're going to be more than uh, good enough to sell in the shop now. As far as dates go, well, the all the gators are the same date, and they are marked. Oh, this one is the best one to see. And they've got a Department of Defence broad arrow, and I think it says J. Oakman, 1939, and the number 15, which may be a size. So these are World War II gators, and all four are the same uh, date. We'll spin this one over and have a look. How nice does that leather look? I mean, it's still a little stiff, but for one treatment, that's come out really well. I do need to give them an extra wipe over. Uh, here we go. This one's nice and clear. J. Oakman, I assume, is the maker, 1939, and the defense arrow and number 15. The Sam Brown belt cleaned up fantastic. The brass pieces have some really nice decoration. I'm pretty sure that's World War I, but there is no marks on it, no dates. Uh, there was a part of a name written on something, and I just could make out, I think it was on here, no, somewhere, and I could just make out the the family that who I thought I had bought the stuff from. So that's in pretty good condition. It's come up quite nice too. You could actually still wear that. And this other belt is the shoulder strap for it. So that's great, and I will assemble that and show you at the end. But uh, I think that's going to be... Uh, I think it's World War One, And the, ends, the end of the shoulder strap... No, the shoulder strap didn't have marks either. But I found another belt. Which may or may not be part of it. And you guys that are into militaria may know. The end of this one has 
a double buckle set up so whether that's part of the the um, shoulder strap or something to do with the sand brand belt or something to do with the uniform in general uh, I don't know but at the end of it on this end uh, we had some markings and I'll see if I can get a good enough shot of that in the light here and that actually says I can't make out the top words something and company I think but the date at the bottom is 1915 so that's World War One. And I think that goes with the Sam Brown. So I reckon they're 1915. I reckon they're World War One era. The Gators are all World War Two. Anyway, I'll uh, give them a bit, a bit more of a wipe over. I'll roll them back up into their normal uh, position, you know, their normal state, and uh, we'll work out some prices. Here we are back in the shed, and I've returned the Gators to their original um, positions. However, they are much more flexible now they're absolutely really good i'm impressed uh i've left the back end uh un or loose and unattached so that people can read the dates there um they match up they're all pretty much identical they certainly are date wise but these two were a pair uh the buckles are just a little bit more tarnished than these ones these ones are more um bright brass buckles so they're amazing condition, considering how you saw them first, which wasn't actually far away from the condition of the, the old leather bag itself. Uh, the Sam Brown belt buckles up really nicely. I did actually try to put it on. It's certainly wearable, but um, let's just say I may have been in a slightly better pasture than the uh, person that used to wear this, and uh, it would have been a little bit tight. But it's cleaned up really well, and you can see how the shoulder strap goes across it now. And that's in great condition as well. Uh, it just buckles up this side here. And the other side has a loop with a little button thing that you push over. The brass hardware is all really nice. I didn't really polish that up. It just it cleaned up fairly well on its own. And as I said, I'm pretty sure that's World War I. Uh, especially with the, the nice decoration on the brassware. I found a couple of World War I ones online that had similar and none of the Sambron belts that I found online, well, not many of them, I think, had any marks at all. Um, whereas this, I couldn't identify this one with the double buckle. So if you know what that suits, let me know. It's certainly military and it's certainly 1915. Uh, and I'm going to sell it with the Sam Brown belt uh, get up because I think it's all part of the uniform. As for price, I found some of these listed for oh, quite a few, well, not a not quite a few but a couple between 100 and 200 dollars they do make reproductions now that sell for oh, 50 60 dollars thereabouts but they're pretty hard to find a uh, similar one to this and condition wise other than a few little nibbles this one's pretty good i'm going to put a hundred dollars on this and include the 1915 belt as well uh, unless i find out from you guys that that's worth selling separately so i reckon we'll go for a hundred dollars for that and in its condition now, I'm pretty sure we'll get it. As for the Gators, World War II aren't as aren't valuable as World War I. I did find some World War I um, pairs that made uh, well over $100, I think it was. I'm going to probably go $60 a pair on these. They are in great condition. You could actually still wear these. So we go $60 a pair, $120, $100 for the Sam Brown. So it's $220, pretty good out of an old suitcase that a lot of people would have thrown straight in the skip. The suitcase itself, I've thrown the other bits of leather in there, including the old strop. I don't think it's worth trying to get the hardware off it. I thought I might just leave this as it is, not even cleaned, and uh, just put it in the shop for free. I'll put it under a table somewhere where it doesn't matter that it's a bit dirty. Um, it's not worth me getting the brass bits off as far as brass value goes and someone may indeed be restoring an old case and need some of this original hardware i would rather that be the case i'm happy to give it away uh, and i certainly don't really just want to put it in the bin the other bits we found uh, the shoe stretcher i might just throw in the one dollar box at the shop i don't think it's really worth selling uh, if i had a pair i might put five dollars we've had them before and they don't sell very well although i have seen them listed online for a fair bit but realistically they're a bit hard to sell these two i don't know what they're off if you know what they suit let me know it may be just part of a horse harness it might be 
something to do with the actual case itself. Uh, the other leather straps, which I did throw in the case, uh, I think some of them were actually just straps that went with the case. And then this other longer one here, uh, it's more recent, I think. It's got a, a more recent steel buckle on it. I think that was basically just a belt, you know, just a simple leather belt just to keep some workers' strides up. So don't think there's much for you there. They can all go for free if anyone wants them. We've got good value out of the military stuff. And a couple of bits, well, I'm not going to throw these in the scrap bin or anything yet. I might put them in the suitcase as well, but if you know what they are, let me know. So there we go, guys, something else out of the shed, and that completes episode 57, and some really good value. Um, I didn't get my notepad. I'm not sure what we're up to. I think we're well over $8,000. Another 200 is that what we said? $220 here. I think that's a, an achievable price. And uh, we get a lot of people in the shop after Militaria. So, yeah, happy to find that. Thanks for watching, guys. Catch you in the next video. Bye for now.